Hey guys, TST here, and I'm here for the first podcast, here with Clayton from The Winning Take. Today we're going to be doing a Heat podcast. We're going to be going over the basics from what happened the off season last season, who they should sign, and some other things that we're going to talk about. Um, so first, Clayton, how are you doing today? Good. I'm doing great. I'm excited to start this podcast. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to start with just a little last season review. What do you think about their season? Um, well, they started off pretty pretty bad, but they bounced back, and I believe they had the best record in basketball for the second half of the season. Um, Dion Waiters finally found himself, which is um, big for them since they don't really have a big guard. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, I think they really did well in that second half season, like you were saying. I think they went 30-11, and 29-12, something like that. Um, so their second half of the season was very, very good. And I thought they were going to make the playoffs that year, but um, I guess not. So, um, yeah, as, as as we were talking about Deion Waiters, he did just get um, – they just re-signed him for a big deal. I think it was $50 million or something like that. What do you think about that? Uh, it was a good move. I think he's one of the better shooting guards in the league. So um, the, to be able to keep him, I know he was interested in going to the Knicks as well. And um, – he chose to stay in Miami, and that's some, a major pickup for the Miami Heat just to be able to keep a major marquee scorer in their lineup along with Hassan and other pieces. Yeah, I, I do really agree with you on that. I, I think that um, what Waiters was saying about him being a top five shooting guard is definitely not true, but I do believe that he's definitely going to be a top ten shooting guard in the future. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just a scorer. He's a pure scorer. That's pretty much mm-hmm. true. Uh, so next, um, we're going to talk about some key players. If you have anything else to add, you can do that before we before we keep going. All right, we can go. Okay. So, what do you think are go the ahead. key players of the future for the Miami Heat? Who do you think they should sign or potentially trade for, or p- players that they have in their roster that they should keep? Um, obviously, um, I feel Hassan should stay. I feel like Dion and Hassan should be a cornerstone. Um, they haven't been mentioned in this free agents list, but I feel like Derrick Rose could be a okay. good pickup for them. Why do you say Derrick a, Rose? A sign and trade or something like that. Um, I just feel like he can lead a team. I mean, he did it with a lot of people forget how good he was. Hmm. They just put aside the injuries and everything like that. So, um, he did well with the Knicks this year. I know there's a lot of drama surrounding the Knicks, but he did well. He was He's a top 15 or a top 20 point guard in the league, and it's been proven that you need a good point guard to win in this league. I mean, I definitely Kyrie agree. Irving, so what do you think they should do with Goran Dragic in that situation, being that they have him, and if they really want to go after Rose, what are they going to do with him? Um, I mean, it's either they're going to have to do a three-team trade, for a team like the Knicks, like the Knicks are wanting a solid veteran point guard to mentor um, Frank Nitalikin. Nitalikin, no, it's saying. fine, it's fine, man. But um, they want a veteran point guard to mentor him, and Gorgon Dragic is a veteran point guard who can do just that. I see. Um, I just think the Heat are young, and they need to cons- like start the rebuilding process with, uh, you know, can you imagine Derrick Rose and Hassan Whiteside pick and roll? Exactly. That's just... And do you think in this mentor situation, do you think Derrick Rose will provide a good enough mentor uh, situation for Dion Waiters and some of the backups? Yeah, I think um, Dion Waiters and Derrick Rose would fit perfectly. I, I feel so like too. they have the same kind of mentality. And um, Dion would be like the perfect sidekick mm. for Derrick Rose as he blossoms into his full potential. I feel like Dion doesn't get a lot of credit on how well he played with Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. Yeah. Um, I, um, I'd i rather have Dion Waiters than Victor Oladipo. I truly agree with I'm that. If I'm a Thunder. I truly agree with that. Now, what do you think about Kelly Olynyk? They uh, did sign him for $50 million, uh, probably a little higher than that. But um, 
Where do you think he's going to fit on the team, and how well do you think he's going to fit on that team? Um, Kelly Olynyk, he played well with the Celtics. Um, it was a good move by the Celtics to move him, but um, Kelly Olynyk, he's a good role player. He can he can provide you know rebounds off the bench, or I mean, with the loss of Chris Bosh, he can come in and play maybe the four spot. And you know, keep Hassan at the five spot or okay. switch them around. Um, I feel like he brings a defensive, um, not like too big of a defensive present, but he keeps he's solid if you put him at the four spot. Like you don't have to really worry about someone dropping like twenty, thirty, forty on him. I, I do agree with that. And I feel like one of the biggest problems with Miami Heat at the moment is their outside shooting. I feel like Olenek can provide a great stretch four for their team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the dude's seven foot. He's going to provide mismatches for opposing power forwards if they do decide to put him at the four. Um, okay. Or he could be a good backup center for Hassan. I mean, it's, there's not a lot of great backup fives in this league. That is definitely true. There aren't a lot. There is a lot of deep centers that you can pick up for role players. Uh, what do you think about Justice Winslow? How do you think he's going to do later in the season in his uh, NBA career? No, I like Justice Winslow. I get made fun of by all my friends because I'm so hot on him. I feel like he's athletic. He he can shoot. I'm just. He can become a cornerstone franchise player. Um, obviously, he's not going to be like the next LeBron yeah. or something like that. But he, he can be a solid player. I mean, like something like a Paul Pierce, someone like that, okay. that, that you can um, pair with a couple other superstars like Hassan Whiteside and a Dion Waiters, and you get a good championship team. I see. What do you think? Uh, do you think Justice Winslow is on the right team, or do you think he should go somewhere where he will be able to fit into the starting lineup immediately, or should he play more of a bench role for the earlier stages of his career? Um, obviously, um, Miami's a fantastic place to play. Um, I mean, LeBron played there. Dwayne Wade stayed there. Dwayne Wade wanted to stay there. If the contract situation would have been fixed, he would have stayed there. Um, obviously, Dion Waiters resigned. Uh, it's a fun place to be. Um, I, I, if I was him, I'd stay put just because of the young talent that they have. And I mean, the only other I don't the NBA has a bunch of good small forwards. So I feel like if he stays put in Miami, he can learn the ropes behind a very good coach in Eric Spolstra, and he can blossom into the next star in Miami along with Hassan. I, I agree with you there, and I feel like he's in a very good position being that he is a true small forward. He's not really a, a two guard that will play the three or a four mm -hmm. or a four that will play the three. He's in a great position for uh, his career. Now the next thing we're going to talk about here is uh, Chris Bosh. He was waived earlier in the offseason, and that um, – that wiped off $20 million, $25 million in their salary cap space. What do you think about Bosch and his career in Miami? Um, I feel like he should be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I mean, he he's a two-time NBA champion. And what a lot of people say, because I always see the video of the shot, as they call it, Ray Allen, corner three, against the Spurs. Um, Chris Bosch got that rebound and mm -hmm. was able to throw it back out to Deion Waiters. I mean, Ray Allen, and that that that's the type of plays. I mean, a lot of people said it wasn't a big three, and um, and Chris Bosh is a hell of a player. And whenever he played in Toronto, he was the cornerstone of that franchise. And whenever he got moved to Miami, he had to take a step back because he was playing with two other superstars in LeBron and Dwayne Wade. But he fit well, and the Heat are definitely going to miss him. And I've, they did the right thing on retiring his jersey number. I feel like that was a smart decision on their. Yeah, I, I do agree with you here. The the, uh, the whole Ray Allen situation. Um, one of the, what people very much underestimate is is the rebound there. And uh, Chris mm -hmm. Boston did a great great he did, he did a great job on that play. And um, 
overall in his career, he fits so well in Miami. Probably did better in Miami than he did Toronto. Being that mm-hmm. he was the third scoring option, he still produced great numbers. And that shows how versatile of a player he really is. Yeah, and he was one of the true stretch fours yeah. in the league. Because yeah. he could shoot, and he was he was just scary to go up against. Yeah, I mean, you have to worry about Dwayne Wade scoring and clutch ability and then LeBron's athleticism, and teams forgot about him, and that's where he, that's where he started to feast on teams. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a topic that a lot of Miami Heat fans are very, very salty about. Uh, what is going to happen to their organization without without Gordon Hayward? Uh, missing out on Gordon Hayward is a big blow. Um, after coming off of a year where they lost out on Kevin Durant, where they were strong contenders in that, that um, a lot of people are saying that Pat Riley – He's he's lost his touch ever since um, LeBron James left in 2014. Um, his track record isn't so good. Um, the Dwayne Wade left to Chicago. Uh, he missed out on Kevin Durant. He missed out on Gordon Hayward. So I don't think that he are doomed. Um, I mean, Gordon Hayward is a great player, but I don't. He's not a marquee superstar in this league um, yeah. I feel like with the core that they have they can they have trade assets so they can go and get someone or they can go get someone in free agency in the coming years to where they can be contenders I don't feel like it's time to panic in Miami yet um, just write it out I mean you got a lot of great young talent Justice Winslow Hassan um, etc. I mean, just losing out on Gordon Hayward was a bummer, but not necessarily a killer to their franchise. Yeah, I do agree with you here. The loss of Gordon Hayward was big, but I don't think you can find another Gordon Hayward in the future or in the league right now. But you're not going to find a Kevin Durant. You're not going to find a player like Dwayne Wade. Those are big losses, yes. And they were missed out by by Pat Riley, but it was not entirely his fault. I still feel like Pat Riley has his touch in the league, and he'll make some big plays and splashes in the off season later in his um, career. Right, right. I, I mean, I'm, the Miami Heat are always going to be in the conversation for fr- franchises. I mean, Miami's a beautiful city. Everyone's going to want to play there. I mean, who? Who's to say they don't get pick up a major free agent next year? Yeah, you never know with the NBA. You never know. Now, another thing, they only have about four and a half million dollars in cap space left for this offseason. What do you think they should do with that? Should they wait? Should they sign someone now? That's that's up to them. But what do you think? Um, there is no wrong answer. Um, obviously, if you wait, you can free up some cap space in a trade. So you don't go over in the season, because you keep in mind Carmelo Anthony. Um, if I'm the Knicks right now, I'm keeping Carmelo Anthony until the trade deadline. You know, keep him, made him, make him play well, get his value up, and then a team like Miami, who has young assets, could trade for potentially trade for Carmelo Anthony and get a veteran leader like that who can lead them into the weakened Eastern Conference playoffs. And I guarantee you they would go to the Eastern Conference Finals, the bare minimum, if they got a player like Carmelo. Um, but that $4.5 million could help them in a trade like that. Or they can go out and get a player like um, Tony Allen or Irsan Ilibasova for a stretch four. Okay. Um, he would be a great pickup for them. If stretch four playing along Hassan Whiteside, that would That would be a great front court pair. I do Um, agree here. I think Carmelo Anthony, I think it's time for him to take a pay cut. It's also time for him to leave New York. If you really want to leave New York, then you got to take your pay cut and you got to get traded. That's his only option. Yeah, he. There's a lot of talks of him going to Houston or Cleveland, but he could go somewhere else and be a contender. I mean, he could go to a team like the Heat and he could instantly set himself up for an Eastern Conference Finals possibility. And 
you never know. I know like LeBron is on a final streak, but you never know a year where someone gets hurt or something like that. Um, I, I, I can see him going to multiple places and be being a competitor, and Miami's one of them. So the last thing we're going to do, guys, we're going to be doing, doing a little bit of trivia here, see how much Clayton knows about um, Miami Heat. We have, let's see how many questions. We got 15 questions. Let's see how much you know. And, uh, yeah, let's get started here. So, first question, Clayton. The Miami Heat lost center John Sally to which team in a 1995 expansion draft? Cavaliers, Hornets, Raptors, or Knicks? Hmm. I'm going to go with the Hornets. The Hornets is incorrect. The correct answer is the Toronto Raptors. Honestly, I had no idea what that question was. Really? Really? So to start the 1988-89 season, the Miami Heat set an NBA record for losing how many games? 24, 19, 17, or 13? <sighs> 24? 24 is incorrect. The correct answer is 17. I was about to say 17. I know nothing about the Yeah, game. it's it's okay. I don't know anything either, man. So, the Miami Heat players have been named... Oh, wait. Which Miami Heat players have been named to um, of People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People? Alonzo Mourning and Harold Miner, Dwayne Wade and Mourning, Shaq and Steve Smith, or Gary Payton and Wade? Hmm. I'm going to go with... Dwayne Wade and Alonzo Mourning. That is correct. Dwayne yes. Wade and Alonzo Mourning. Yes. Which team was not a part of a four-team, two-phase league expansion with the Miami Heat? Timberwolves, Mavericks, Hornets, Magic. Hornets. That is incorrect. The correct answer is the Dallas Mavericks. I thought I was going to guess the Hornets too. So I honestly I couldn't tell you. The Miami Heat was swept by which team in the first round of the 1992 NBA playoffs? Celtics, Bulls, Cavs, or Knicks? I'm going to go with the Bulls. That is correct. Michael Jordan. Yeah, Michael Jordan. Scottie Pippen. Was Kerr on that team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that was a... Before the Miami team. Heat, how many teams did Alonzo Mourning play with in 2004 to 2005? None. One, two, or three. Didn't he play? I, I'm going to go with one. I can't. Was he a lifer? Ooh, that is incorrect. He played with two different teams in 2004 oh. and 2005. Which TV wow, show dude. did Miami Heat guard Gary Payton never appear on? The Cosby Show, The Jamie Foxx Show, Wheel of Fortune, or The Late Late Show? Wheel of Fortune. That is incorrect. He did not appear on the Cosby Show. I'm gonna look really? up where he played on Wheel of Fortune, real quick. Wheel of Fortune. Great. Let's see here. He played in 1990. Doesn't say. Anyway, next question. Question eight. Miami Heat Udonis Haslam has several tattoos of which state? Michigan, Florida, Kentucky, or Ohio? Kentucky. That is incorrect. The correct answer is Florida. Florida. Well, I mean, I should have guessed that. In the opening round of the 1999 NBA playoffs, the number one seed of Miami Heat lost to what eight-seeded team? Celtics, Knicks, Bulls, or Magic? What year? 1999. I think I know this. Can you give me the teams again? Boston Celtics, New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls, Orlando Magic. I'm 
The New York Knicks. That is correct. New York Knicks. Yes. We're the eight seed. Didn't they win in five? I think they won in five or six. It was pretty interesting series, to be honest. Now, question 10 out of 15. Which university did Miami Heat player Michael Doliak attend? Texas, Utah, Miami, or Kentucky? Goliak sounds like a Utah name. I'm Utah, Utah. I'm sound, it is correct. Two in a row. Yes, yes. It sounds like that too, man. Question 11. What NFL, like what NFL wide receiver was a high school classmate of the Miami Heat's Jason Williams? Michael Vick, Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, or Randy Moss? You said a receiver? Yes. Randy Moss. Most logical answer, that is correct. Randy Moss. Three in a row. Let's get it. Miami Heat Antoine Walker admitted to liking which type of TV shows? Talk shows, game shows, soap operas, or home shopping? Soap operas. Soap operas is... Correct, soap operas. Antoine Walker. Interesting. Those are addicting. Those are so Dicking weird, though. Yeah. The Miami Heat's Udonis hasn't played what sport until 10th grade? Football, tennis, volleyball, or golf? Football. And that is correct. Dude, you're on a roll right now. I'm on it. He's on a question 14 out of 15. Which item does Miami Heat guard Jason Williams not have a tattoo of? A dragon, a peace sign, a panther, or an eyeball? Mm. A dragon. A dragon is incorrect. It's a peace ah. sign. The streak is over. Last question. In the 1995 offseason, the Miami Heat traded Glenn Rice to the Charlotte Hornets for what player? Alonzo Mourning... Ronnie Stikely, Steve Smith, or Tim Hardaway? I want to think it was Alonzo Mourning. Is that your final answer? Yeah. And it is correct, Alonzo Mourning. I knew it. I knew that. Wow. <laughs> Scored 53 out of 100. Um, 8 out of 15. Actually, pretty good for not knowing much about the Miami Heat. Guys, thank you so much for watching the podcast. Clayton, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you. I, I enjoyed it. Awesome, man. If you guys want to tune into the next podcast, which will be going up in a couple days, Clayton will be back. We're going to have a couple other guys joining us. Uh, comment down below what team you guys want us to talk about, whether it be the Celtics or whatever NBA team. Um, that's it, guys. Peace out. See you, Clayton. All right, see you.